This was the light that came to me. This is my original copy of Big Blue, and it's kind of falling apart, obviously. Um, the binding didn't hold up too well over the years. Um, this is my basement book, my introduction to Wicca. And I actually met Buckland and got him to sign the book. It says, To Corinne, in love and light, Raymond Buckland. This is a picture of me squeezing the life out of Raymond Buckland the day we met. At 16, I had chosen to believe in God again, seeking something that would fulfill me spiritually. I've always had a spiritual longing. So, um, reading Buckland's Big Blue gave me a lot of insight into the religion of Wicca. As I went through the book, I came across the 13 laws of witchcraft. It seemed as if someone had taken my secret inner thoughts and written them down and put them into a religion. I was amazed by what I read in the first three chapters of this book, and it convinced me I must be a witch. I have a lot of interesting stories in my life myth, as I call my life, this movie that I live and wake up in every day, this partial reality. When I was five, I lived in like a neighborhood complex. There were a lot of kids, but none of the kids ever wanted to play with me and I never knew why. One day, the kids invited me to play with them. I was really excited. So what are we gonna do, I asked, and they said they were gonna tie me to a tree. And I played along. I guess I wasn't very socialized at this point with other children, so I let them tie me to the tree. I asked them what they were doing when they started putting rocks around the tree and putting twigs around me, and they said that I was a witch and that I needed to be burnt. And thank goodness they did not get the fire lit that day. Uh, I do remember waiting there for quite a while until the sun went down for someone to come and get me out. <laughs> get me out of the ropes. Uh, past life flashback, I'm not sure. And then throughout school, I understand that most kids get made fun of one thing or another, but I was always called a witch, and I was always called names pertaining to the occult, pertaining to the darkness. <laughs> I didn't start wearing, I am gothic, I do wear all black most of the time. Uh, I didn't start doing that until about age 14, so I wasn't wearing black all the time. I was a normal child, just like all the other kids, but the one thing that they always called me was witch. And so they say children know things. And I grew up and I became a witch. It's very interesting from a life myth standpoint, from my life as a movie, being called a witch from age five on up. It's, it's a very interesting side note. It's cute. <laughs> Find the witch, might we burn? I heard you know she is a witch. She looks like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 13 laws of witchcraft. I felt as if someone had taken my thoughts and written them down and put them in a religion. Law number 12, especially. That's when I had my epiphany at law number 12. We do not accept the concept of absolute evil, nor do we worship an entity known as Satan or the devil as defined by the Christian tradition. We do not seek power through the suffering of others, nor accept that personal benefit can be derived only by denial to another. So no Satan, no manipulation, and no suffering. I mean, that sounded pretty good to me. But that whole thing about not believing in the concept of absolute evil, 
was something that really resonated with me personally on a very deep level. And I felt like from that line on, that Wicca must hold some kind of knowledge for me, must hold some kind of key for me. And I began my study in earnest. That year I did my first ritual. I had a very small altar, an egg crate, wooden altar. And I remember I put a string of blue sequins all around me as a circle and I knew that blue was a protective color and it was to bring in the the season of spring I believe it was the spring equinox I didn't do any magic I was just looking for a connection and a religious spiritual celebration I wanted a connection with something bigger than myself and so I sat down with my blue sequin circle I remember feeling amazing I remember the color of the light in the room changing to a golden hue. I remember feeling this golden aura of love wrapping around me. And I felt, wow, I must have done this right because I'm actually getting sensations. I'm actually feeling the light in the room has changed. My energy has changed. And understand I was a baby witch and still a baby psychic. I didn't quite know what was going on with me but I was amazed at this feeling and how real the change in the light was, how tactile and a part of my reality, the shift was, this, this magical circle. Feeling encouraged by that, I began to explore more of Wicca, spellcraft, the tarot, and read more books. I felt that I'd finally found a religion that I could call my own. I stayed solitary for a while, and I do have some advice for those just starting out in Wicca. Stay solitary for at least a year. Your personal relationship with the God and the Goddess, the elemental energies, your spirit guides and whoever else you choose to connect with is the most important in your spirituality. Community is a side note. Understand that your spirituality and your spiritual journey happens from within. Your consciousness is the consciousness that reaches enlightenment. Community can be helpful. Community can be supportive. Community can be many things. So I do suggest that you stay solitary for a year so that you understand where you are on your path and how you would like to proceed from your own mind and your own standpoint. When I was 18, I dedicated myself through a personal ritual to the path of Wicca. It was a very, again, very simple ritual, very simple altar. What happened to me during that ritual was very visual and emotional as well. I went before the gods, as the books say, unadorned, and energetically, I basically laid myself out and said, I give up. I choose the path of Wicca, and I will walk it as long as I am welcomed. What happened at that point in my mind's eye was really neat. The roof came off my apartment building, and I could see the bright blue sky above me, above the altar, and I there unadorned, and vulnerable, but open and loving. And then before my eyes out of the clouds, two deities, a lord and a lady, came unto me there in my little apartment and welcomed me to the path of Wicca and sent me loving vibrations and said that they would guide me on the path and that I was welcome to walk it. That's one of the things about Wicca that I love. It taught me to believe and to see and to know. When you're dealing with magic, when you're dealing with psychic emotions, it makes everything more potent, more powerful. The religion itself is a set of instructions, a possible set of moral codes or rules. But really, when you get in depth with the Lord and the Lady, and you're working with them, it's an elation. It was like discovering I had a spiritual parents. I had a spiritual lineage. 
I had a place in the cosmos. I felt very welcomed, but yet very guided. This wasn't a one-way conversation. I was getting a lot of feedback and synchronicity in my own life. In fact, around this time, I got my first job as a psychic at the Warehouse Nightclub. As I began doing professional tarot readings, my psychic eye, my third eye, opened up even wider. I began to see blue sparkles and purple sparkles uh, every night after work. Working as a nightclub psychic really tested my boundaries and made me push myself to be better and to do better. I really worked on my psychic gifts and I believe sincerely that the gods helped me develop them as I was developing my spirituality. Here I was being a counselor to my peer group as well as educating myself on all the subjects of the occult that I could possibly find. So I was mostly and mainly Wiccan and there was a lot of information on Wicca so there was a lot to do, a lot of rituals to create, a lot of experimentation to do. But I was also growing my third eye <laughs> as if it were as if it were flowering. My third eye became very active. I've always been psychic. However, seeing things in front of my face physically was not really one of my gifts. You know, usually it was in the mind's eye that I would see or feel. I was definitely a feeler. But now, with the guidance of the god and the goddess, asking them to empower my psychic gifts so that I may help my fellow man as a counselor, as an Aquarius, as a humanitarian, we really worked on that together. So that's how I became a baby witch, from almost being burned at the stake at five years old to working as a psychic at the Warehouse Nightclub. If you have any questions about Wicca, shoot me an email and I will answer you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and friend.